Okay, this is a short video on the MX1616 dual H bridge motor driver. I'll get it closer so you can see it. And in case you want to come back to see how I've wired things up. Uh, normally, something like this, you would have two control lines that would control motor A and two control lines that would then control motor B. And then the point is so you can turn the motor on or off or forward and reverse or lock it in a brake position, things like that. But if we're wanting to use this in a application where we have a single line, not two control lines, and we want to be able to just make the motor go forward and backward, then you can wire one of the H-bridge drivers, in this case I'll use the top one, A, as an inverter, and then use B as the H-bridge driver for the motor. So I'll put a battery in here. This is just on 3 volts. You can go up to 10. And this would be our control line. And this red wire here is positive. So if I connect this to positive, you see the motor is now turning counterclockwise. And now it's turning clockwise. So you can control the direction of the motor with a single control line. That comes in handy for interfacing some uh, remote control units to this, or in the case of what I've done for years, uh, tone decoders for whistle detecting and stuff like that, where you have a single control line. You don't have to bring in an inverter to do that, because you don't have two lines to control the motor. You just have one control line to do it. And the reason that you can get away with this is because these H-Bridge drivers, even the uh, older L911 OS, which I've done videos on in the past. Really, the only difference between that and this is the uh, L911 OS is a, a single package. It's to do a dual. They put two of the chips on a on one of these cards, and uh, most of the modules that have that they actually include uh, 10k pull-up resistors on the inputs. This particular chip doesn't have any pull-up resistors on the inputs. In fact, the data sheet states that if you leave a pin not connected, it's considered low. So, there you go. Uh, so in this case, because H-Bridge drivers have a third state, they're a tri-state output, they're not only any one of the output pins high or low, they're also an open circuit. They're tri-state. And that means there's a, a truth code to those two control lines coming in to it. For example, if you make uh, control line 1 low and control line 2 high, then the output to that motor, uh, output 1 would be low and output 2 would be high, the motor would run in one direction. If you do it the other way, uh, make 1 high here on the input and low on the input on 2, then the motor is going to run the other direction because output uh, motor 1 would then be low, high. So you can get that. But if you make both control lines high, that's considered a brake state. And in that state, it makes both of the motor driver output pins go low. So if a motor was trying to back feed into the circuit, it's going to lock it up and work like a brake. But more importantly, is if you make both control lines low, or in the case of this particular chip, the MX1616H, that's the tri-state position, and the outputs are in what they call Z, which is open. They're nothing. So you can take one of those outputs and put a pull-up resistor. In this case, I have a 10K resistor. Pull that. It's output 1. And I've taken input 1 and just tied it to ground. I could have left it floating since the data sheet said you could. And that way, any time that I change the state on input 2, normally with nothing touching it, input 2 is going to be low. So that means the output is an open state. And if it's an open state, this pull-up resistor will pull that output up to V+. Plus. I can then use that positive to come down to the second half of the chip, because this is a dual H bridge. And that'll put a positive on one of the lines, actually line 2, going into motor B. And so the motor's running in one particular direction. But when you then connect this line we left two up here at the top, which was negative, we had two negatives, one and two. If I make one of them positive, in this case two, 
that means it's going to change all the states of the output pins because it's no longer in the double negative state of open circuit. If I make two positive, the motor driver pin two will be positive, but the motor driver pin one will become negative. So this pull-up resistor of 10K will no longer be pulling that pin one positive. It will now go low. And I'll have a low there. And I would have just put a high here. So if I bridged two and three together here, then reverse the state of the motor. So you can wire this uh, half of the H bridge up as an inverter. You can use the other half of the H bridge as your motor driver. And that way you can get a single line control for your motors. Like I say, I've done this in the past using uh, the old L911OS, which is a dual H bridge um, module, where they basically put two of those drivers on one board. But it's a little bit different using that older module because it had the pull-up resistors, the positive, whereas this doesn't have the positive pull-up resistors. And in fact, and I guess in order for this to consider nothing being connected to negative, it must have internal pull-down resistors. But uh, there you go. It's a very useful hack for a very inexpensive and small board. It's much smaller than the uh, L911OS was. Uh, more than half as small. So if you got a tight place, you can fit them in. It'll work anywhere from 2 volts to 10 volts. Uh, each motor can, uh, can draw continuously up to an amp and a half with peaks at uh, 2.5 amps. So it's a very versatile chip.